Welcome back to Research and Design Build. In a previous episode, I've shown you guys how to uh, install this insulated uh, subfloor. Um, this is in my basement. And in today's episode, I'm going to be prepping that uh, insulated subfloor for uh, tile um, that's going to go over top, as well as a uh, embedded uh, in-floor heat system. Now, as per Drycore's uh, recommendations uh, on their website, for any tile uh, that's going to go over top of their insulated panels, they are recommending that you install five uh, fasteners into the concrete per panel. Now, this is quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of fasteners that went into this. So for the fasteners, um, I'm using Tapcon screw fasteners. They are two and three quarters of an inch long and they're one or a quarter inch in diameter. Uh, so this will allow roughly uh, two inches of uh, embedment into the concrete. And uh, we'll hold these uh, panels really tight uh, to the ground. Now I'm using a proper hammer drill, um, not the hammer drill that, that kind of comes on your, uh, your regular cordless drill. Um, but a proper concrete hammer drill uh, does make the process go uh, significantly faster. I'm also using a drill with a chamfer pit and that's going to allow me to countersink all of these fasteners um, into the subfloor panels so that I've got a smooth surface uh, on top. Now these Tapcon fasteners use a number three Phillips bit. I would recommend grabbing a few extra bits when you're at the hardware store. I went through uh, one bit for every 25 fasteners or so, and I was just snapping the tops right off the bits. The next step was to install a quarter inch thick piece of plywood on top. Um, now this was, uh, I pre-cut this, uh, made sure everything fit, and then came back with uh, regular carpenter's glue, glued uh, the panels down to the subfloor panels, and then came back over it with uh, an air stapler, the uh, staples are three quarters of an inch long, so they'll go about half inch uh, into the subfloor panels. There's no reason to go further than that because then you're just hitting the insulation. Uh, the reason for doing this is twofold. Um, one, it uh, kind of ties all the subfloor panels together a little bit better, gives you a uh, uh, you know a more sturdy base to put your tile. Um, and then the second thing that it does is that if any of those Tapcon fasteners over time backed out for any reason um, through vibration or anything else, um, that's going to hit this quarter inch piece of plywood and is not going to come up into your radiant flooring and uh, potentially crack a tile. So the next step is getting the heating mat down. Um, now uh, you have to size this for the size of room you have. Uh, this is from Warmly Yours. And you need to make sure that, um, depending on your room layout, now because I knew that I was going to be sort of twisting it and turning it and that sort of thing, they've got one mat that is specifically designed to allow you to uh, sort of cut the matting and then uh, twist it to turn it around bends and that sort of thing. They've got another style of mat that is just designed for like a long rectangular hallway for instance or a rectangle and that is not meant to be cut or turned or twisted. Um, so uh, I almost bought the wrong one by mistake but uh, you know you need to make sure that you've got uh, that twist and turn mat if that's uh, what you want to use. They do have several other uh, options available as well. Now it's just a case of uh, unrolling the mat and uh, making your cuts and getting all of your heating cable down where you want it, uh, making sure that you maintain the spacing in between the coils. There are uh, several ways of adhering this. Uh, now these white uh, white bands, uh, I didn't realize it, um, but uh, they're actually double-sided tape, so you can peel that off and then use that to adhere these uh, down to the ground. Um, I didn't use them, um, probably probably definitely could have, um, but didn't realize it until the end of the installation. Now, I did go back and use my air stapler uh, to staple the, the matting down. Um, I did not put any staples over top of the heating cable because uh, that would potentially uh, cause a break in the wire and uh, wreck the heating cable. So uh, you got to make sure that you're very delicate with this 
and that any attaching that you're doing, you're just doing uh, to the matting, the green matting itself, not to the heating wire. Uh, Warm Layers does recommend using a uh, uh, hot melt glue, but uh, I'm never a big fan of hot melt glue. I find it uh, quite messy. Now with the mat down, you can focus on the temperature sensor. So this temperature sensor will sense what the temperature of the floor is and regulate the uh, thermostat uh, turning it on and off depending on uh, the temperature of the floor and the temperature that you set. Um, so that has specific instructions on kind of where you have to place that within the mat. And uh, so I've got a close up shot here of how I've uh, installed that. Now you'll notice that I've used a couple spare pieces of sort of the green matting uh, that I've draped over top of the cable and then stapled down uh, to secure those cables in place. And then I went through the whole mat and ensured that I didn't have any uh, loose ends that were sticking up that would then uh, stick through uh, the next layer of uh, uh, self-leveling cement that I'm gonna play, put on to encapsulate these uh, heating wires. So once this was completed, uh, it was now time to prime. Um, could have done this before, but I didn't know how long it was gonna take me to get the mat down, and the primer uh, has to go down um, within 24 hours of you putting on the, uh, the thin set to sort of embed the, uh, the heating cables. So because I wasn't sure how long it was going to take me, I figured that I would, uh, you know, do that kind of after I had the mat down. Now what this priming does do is that it uh, gives you a higher guarantee, I guess, that the thin layer that you're going to be putting on the self-leveling uh, does adhere properly uh, to the plywood and to the, the heating elements and you don't have anything peeling up. So in some areas there is potential for you uh, to have a pretty thin layer and you wouldn't want it flaking off. So now it's time to get uh, everything ready for pouring the self-leveling cement which will uh, embed the heating wires and allow you to then uh, tile over top. Now the first step, and this is one that I did not uh, take a video of, was going around and just with some uh, uh, caulk, uh, caulked off any areas where I thought the, the self-leveling leveling cement would flow out. So, uh, you know, underneath the tub or where the tub hit the subfloor, you know, I put a bead of caulk around there um, if you think it's going to flow, you know, out under the walls, uh, make sure you have that sealed off because it will flow to wherever the lowest point is. And if that's out of the room, for instance, um, then uh, you need to block that off. So you will see that I've got a little piece of uh, MDF across the doorway and I've wrapped that with uh, tuck tape and I just uh, air nailed that with some uh, 23 gauge uh, pin nails to the floor and that was just to prevent uh, the self-leveling leveling cement from flowing out of the bathroom. Now for the self-leveling cement, um, please follow the instructions as far as the amount of water to add uh, very carefully. Uh, these products are quite sensitive to the amount of water that you do add. Um, they are very runny, but uh, if you do make them too runny um, or you know, not runny enough, you aren't gonna get the results that you want. So um, do pay close attention to the uh, amount of water to add and uh, stick to that. Also, if you add too much, you could have a problem with strength and other problems that you don't wanna do uh, or don't wanna mess with. Uh, the consequences of this going poorly, um, you know, you could be tossing everything, including your, your uh, your heated mat and everything if things go uh, go poorly. So follow the, the instructions on the product that you choose to use. So after an additional uh, help to get the product to spread a little bit uh, quicker um, and cover the entire floor area, uh, you need to let that set in, in the case of this particular product for 24 hours uh, before starting your tile work.
If you've uh, found this video useful or helpful, um, please leave a comment below. If you have any questions as well, um, I do try to get back to everybody that posts a question or, or a concern. So uh, please post it in the comment section below and also consider subscribing. Uh, in the next video, we'll, uh, we'll tackle actually putting the tile down and uh, getting that in place as well as uh, grouting the tile.